on this episode of Around the Wicket, the ICC Men's T20 World Cup Trophy Tour driven by Nissan moves from Australia to Papua New Guinea to meet Glenn Maxwell and Charles Amini. Once again, thank you to all the fans for their T20 Trophy filter submissions. If you'd like to get featured here too, head over to at T20 World Cup on Instagram and try the filter. Now, let's get this rolling. Welcome to Around the Wicket, your official ICC Men's T20 World Cup Trophy to a show driven by the wonderful folks at Nissan. My name is Danish Seth and our first guest today is a superstar and he happens to be the most requested guest on this show. Dare I say he's a half decent cricketer. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Glenn Maxwell. <laughs> Glenn Maxwell is an Australian all-rounder and quite possibly one of the best cricketers to have ever played T20 cricket. He gave us the first glimpse of his talent in 2014 in the ICC Men's T20 World Cup where he made a sensational 74 of just 33 balls against Pakistan. It's over again. He would carry this form into the ICC Men's Cricket World Cup in 2015 where he scored his maiden ODI century in 51 balls. In the quarter-final against Pakistan, Maxwell scored 44 of 29 balls, which included one of his most innovative shots. In this episode, Glenn tells us his World Cup aspirations, the toughest bowler he's ever faced, and whether he's working towards becoming a full-time TikToker, because we think he is. Glenn, firstly, welcome to the show. How are you and what are your aspirations for your side at the T20 World Cup? Yeah, looking forward to getting going. Um, we've got a, a really good squad that's um, played probably a fair bit of cricket together. Yeah, I'm sure the guys are, are really pumped about the opportunity to represent their country in a, in a world tournament. And uh, Glenn, what would you say is your favourite T20 innings? Probably my, um, my first 100 for Australia. Um, against Sri Lanka. Yeah, it was pretty special because I'd been dropped um, from the one day and the test side before that. I fell just short of Aaron Finch's um, highest score record. Um, couldn't get much of the strike the last two overs, unfortunately, but um, but yeah, it was it was a pretty awesome night. Uh, who do you think would be the toughest bowler to face at the T20 World Cup? Yeah, that's a pretty good question. I think playing in the UAE, um, the spinners are obviously going to have a, a, big, a big say in the matter. I think um, you always look to guys like Namrai, um, Rashid Khan, the trick spinners that um, have the ability to take the ball both ways and, and um, pressure both sides of the bat. This is a little bit of a self-appreciation question. Uh, the best shot you've ever hit at a World Cup? I hit one against Afghanistan in the 2015 World Cup. I hit a reverse sweep without moving my feet whatsoever and hit it over third man for six. Um, and I just couldn't have got it any better. Uh, now to the question that matters. All right, this is a serious one. Who's better at TikTok, Maxwell or Warner? <laughs> I, I think I think Warner floods your stream with random face swap stuff, which is, which takes no effort, absolutely no effort. I feel like I put, I put the time and care into a TikTok. If I'm going to do one, I'll, I'll spend some time editing, playing around with different different things. I, I, I like to think I've got the the care factor. This is a serious cricket question, Glenn. As someone who's known for innovation and improvisation in cricket, how has T20 cricket evolved over the last decade, according to you? I think the way teams actually think about T20 cricket has completely changed. Um, if you have a slight deficiency in T20 cricket, it seems to get highlight, highlighted a lot more um, in a game where if you face four or five dot balls from a certain bowl, that's going to be highlighted going forward. If there's no, no real place to hide in T20 cricket where 10 years ago, like it was just a, a hit and giggle game and geez, it became serious so quickly. <laughs> it turned around. Um, uh, uh, Glenn, if there was one retired player you had the option of adding to your current squad, uh, in their prime for the World Cup, who would it be? And this can be anyone from around the world. 
Sir Garfield Sobers, Sir Viv Richards, Sir Ian Botham. <laughs> I think I think any one of those three. I think um, what they added uh, with their skill set and a bit of swagger. You need a bit of confidence. You need to exert a bit of physical presence in T Twenty cricket. And, um, yeah, and you need to entertain. All right. Now these are the questions I was supposed to ask. Our next segment is called Questions I'd Never Ask. These are questions that never ask, but since we're here, I'm just going to go ahead and parrot whatever is on my script, right? Your TikTok videos seem to be more trending than your cricket videos, so why aren't you getting the hint? <laughs> well, I enjoy playing cricket more than I enjoy making TikTok videos. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Second fastest century, second highest career strike rate. Second highest catches in an innings, second Australian to score a century in all formats. Have you ever considered being first? Well, <laughs> no, <laughs> I haven't. <laughs> uh, you've played cricket for so many clubs and teams that sports websites had to add a see more button for your page, just for your page. How deep are your commitment issues? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm engaged now, so <laughs> it's not that deep. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, you're right. I should probably just stick to one team, but no one will have me for more than six months. They get sick of me. Your most destructive knocks uh, 145 of 65 balls and 100 of 51 balls. Uh, both came against Sri Lanka. What do you have against those guys? They seem really nice. Yeah, the, the, yeah they are actually the nicest people in the world. Um, one of the nicest country I've been to ever as well. So it's, yeah, it is a bit cruel. I, I copped it a fair bit on social media for that, like stop bullying us and pick on pick on someone else. And yeah, well, <laughs> it wasn't until, I, it wasn't until I finally got 100 against someone else that it, it all changed. Okay, let's get on to our next segment. It's called Fan Powered Questions. These are... Uh... Fans were really excited on social media to uh, connect with you. Who is the laziest in the Australian dressing room? There's no real lazy people. It's just there's there's chilled out guys, the, the fast bowlers like Josh Hazelwood, one of the most chilled out guys in the world. Uh, the question is, who inspired you to play the switch hit? There wasn't really an inspiration to play the switch. I remember watching KP do it. Uh, against Morelli. I'd already been working on reverse sweeps and um, when I introduced that to my game, it just opened up another avenue and... All right, thank you so much, Glenn. It's time for you to polish your book cricket skills and we're gonna see you in a bit. That was Australia's Glenn Maxwell looking solid as ever, but strap in because we're gonna drive our virtual Nissan into beautiful Papua New Guinea. Our next guest is Charles Amini. Papua New Guinea's Charles Amini is a skillful leg spinner with ancestral roots in the cricketing world with both his parents having played for the national side. Charles was part of the PNG squad in the ICC Under-19 Men's Cricket World Cup in Malaysia in 2008. He made his debut in an ODI in 2014 against Hong Kong and a year later in T20I versus Ireland. In the 40 international matches he has played so far, Charles has picked 35 wickets and scored 450s. He plans to add to those numbers with Papua New Guinea set to be a part of their first ever ICC World Cup. In this episode, Charles will tell us how he's preparing for the tournament and who he thinks is the best cricketer in his family. CJ, good to see you on the show. Firstly, how are you and how does it feel to be a part of your country's first global ICC event? Must be a big deal. Yeah, very big deal for us. I'm, I'm actually really good. But yeah, very excited for what's uh, what what's coming up uh, with, uh, with the T20 World Cup. Thinking of it is... It's probably one aspect where the excitement is there, but I think once it comes closer and the days are getting closer, I think the, the hype will be much bigger than what it is right now. Uh, CJ, your parents, your grandfather and brother, like you, have played for PNG. 
I need objective honesty. All right, just yep. drop everything and be objective about this. Who is the best yep. cricketer in the family? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I don't know. I don't I don't want to brag, but I don't think any of them have gone to the World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> no, but in all honesty, I would probably say my bigger brother, yeah. Chris. Yeah. He was he was a very very good player. We've been told uh, you're into suing. Yes, yeah, yeah, sewing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so give us one cricketer from uh, this World Cup you'd love to sit and uh, sue with, and why? Just pick anybody. I would, I would pick Kipling Doriga because if his shirt sizes are big, he would ask to sew his shirt smaller so it's a very tight fit. Yeah, but how did you pick this habit up? My mum. My mom always used to sew, and she would sew uh, clothes, and then she started sewing face masks back in PNG, and then ah. yeah, so that's why I just joined along and just started helping along, and it just became a habit. If there was one retired player in their prime, and you had an option to add them into the PNG team, uh, into the current World Cup squad, who would it be? And it can be anyone from around the world. Myself and the captain Asad spoke about <laughs> this, and. We would go with Sewag. Wow. Yeah. Get him to open the batting. Get us off to a good start, make use of the power play, and that's it. And he's a very fun person to be around. That's a bonus. That's the bonus. All right, CJ. Uh, the next segment we're going to be participating and uh, running into is called Questions I'd Never Ask. Mind you, these are questions I'd never ask. Your grandfather. Father, yes. mother, and brother have all led a PNG cricket team. How do you sleep at night knowing you're only the vice captain? <laughs> I'm okay with it. I'm actually fine. I, when I was playing first, I never really wanted to captain. To be honest, I was happy just being an ordinary player. <laughs> All right. Uh, PNG is home to ferocious snakes, lizards, amphibians. How does it feel that your team is called the Baramundis, best known as main course? <laughs> yes. No, they are known. They are also known as fighting fish. They are fighting fish. So, we are fighters. That's why we got that name. Interesting. Uh, you topped the class in information technology and received a scholarship, but you chose cricket. Did your family yeah. pressure you into cricket, CJ? <laughs> no, they didn't. You know, I, that's a really weird story because it, after I had got given that scholarship, the tour to Zimbabwe for the ODIs were on, and I actually didn't see that email when I came back from Zimbabwe. Everything had already been done, and I lost that opportunity. I that's one of the biggest regrets I, I have so far. All right. As an all-rounder, <laughs> do you ever feel it gives you two times the chance to fail on the field? <laughs> yes, of course. Of course. If you fail twice, then I don't know what else you can do. Just go back and sleep. PNG's home cricket stadium is named Amini Park after your family. As a third generation Amini, do you ever feel bad that there might be nothing left to name after you? <laughs> I love this. Ah. No, I'll just leave it as no. Okay, let's get on to our next segment. It's called Fan Powered Questions. This segment is fan-powered questions. Our fans have sent in questions. Who are the top batsmen you've bowled to at the associate level? I would go with Kyle. Mm -hmm. Is Jordan Henderson your favourite player? <laughs> no. I don't know. I don't know like Liverpool. I'm a Chelsea fan. <laughs> no, okay. Let's, <laughs> let's leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> if you weren't playing cricket, what sport would you be playing? Soccer. Definitely soccer. For Liverpool? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Of course no, for Chelsea. Would not be in the list. Who is your favourite captain in world cricket and why? I would I would go with Aaron Finch. I think he's a good I think he's a really good captain. I think he's a very underrated captain. 
and I think the way that he goes about his captaincy is very aggressive in his captaincy and I, I kind of like that. All right, CJ, it's time for you to polish your book cricket skills and we're going to see you in a bit. So, uh, guys, it's time to battle for cricket's greatest prize, the coveted book cricket championship. Now, just to let you know, Namibia leads the chart with 40 runs. Uh, and we're very curious to see how both of you do. Now, before we start, here are the rules. Each player flips the book open six times, playing an over. The last digit of the even-numbered page that you flip is the number of runs you score. So, just to explain it, if you flip a zero, it's a dot ball. If you get two, four, six, eight, you can even score an eight, right? Now, books are flipped alternatively. Each player plays one ball at a time. And here's a little tip for Glenn in particular. Beth was here. She's represented Australia already. And uh, she scored 28 runs. So what we're going to do is between you and her, we're going to take the best of either score. And now pick up the one, two. Two. two there, okay? That's gone and done the distance. 66. It's a six. Oh. Wow. <laughs> this is truly a Glenn Maxwell show, the first two balls, huh? <laughs> 222. Yeah. I'm obviously giving him a strike. <laughs> well, I kept on doing the same page. It must have a bend in it. So it's True, four. it's got before. It's four then. Okay, okay. That one, one, eight. Eight. It's oh, it's an eight. Well done. Okay. Is that an eight? That is a piggy. Eight. It's out of here. Wow. <laughs> 20. Jeez. What's that? That's an 8 again. Glenn, are you flipping <laughs> a book that only has like the number 8 as page numbers? Oh my goodness. 310. <laughs> oh no. Okay. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> 16. That's, That's 6 and, and the, the last ball. It's a yeah. 6. No, no. <laughs> uh, Glenn, 42 in the Book Cricket Championship. It takes you right to the top of the leaderboard. You must be used to just being number one, aren't you? Let's hope so. <laughs> I'm hoping that RCB are going to be number one this year as well. So, maybe two wins. Two wins, that'd be nice. And uh, CJ, uh, uh, you know, you just lost this game to Glenn. Any words from you? No, I think I just had a really good bowler bowling to me. We'll give you a chance to win as well, uh, CJ, because our next uh, game is called uh, the Super Over. We're going to a Super Over! And uh, what happens here is I give you one topic and you have to go back and forth with answers to the questions I ask until someone fails to respond in five seconds. This is a really simple one. The topic for today is cricket personalities with a moustache. We'll start with you, CJ. Merv Hughes. David Boone. Jadeja. Uh, Shikha Darwin. Those are the only two I know. <laughs> That's it. Congratulations, Glenn. You win this one too. Glenn, you could just rattle some names. Uh, Ian Botham. David Warner. Matt Wade is the occasional Mo. Mitchell Johnson. Couple Dave. Yep. Javi Galshrinath. I think it's a very 90s thing. I think moustaches were very 90s. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and well, well groomed and haircuts. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you very much, both of you. And uh, CJ, uh, sorry you lost both the games, but uh, it was fun having you on the show. Thank you, CJ. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much. And that brings us to the end of this episode of Around the Wicket. On our next episode, our virtual Nissan heads over to Asia. Now, if there's a guest you'd like to watch from there, please do let us know in the comments section. And as always, customer's king, so we'll bring you whom you want. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Danish Seth. We'll see you again on another episode.